All right, guys. So uh, shout out to the two of you that are on this document right now. But uh, I thought I'd take some time to record a short video to let you know what the expectations are for the gas laws home activity. Uh, this was something that I just sort of threw at you last week, didn't really explain a whole lot. Um, I, to be fair, I was a bit distracted, but uh, now that I'm back in the swing of things a little bit, I figured I'd take some time to kind of walk you through what I'm expecting here. So first of all, um, this background section is really important um, because we, we didn't get to talk about sort of the assumptions that we make about gas particles when we talk about gases. Um, and these properties are what we call the kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic referring to the movement of particles and molecular referring to the molecules that make up these gases. So um, there are four assumptions listed here that we make about gases. The first one right here is that gases have relatively large spaces between particles. That means that they're really spread out, like as much as spread out as they possibly can be. And number two is that they have a very low density compared to liquids or solids. That's sort of related to that um, in that the particles are very spread out and they're not packed together very tightly. Um, another assumption that we make is that gases are highly compressible. That means that although they are very well spread out, if we put, apply some pressure to them, we can press them into very, very small spaces and gases can expand or contract to fill their container. Uh, so if we were to scrunch something up, if we were to push down a bike pump, for example, uh, which I happen to have right here. So if we were to push down a bike pump, the area that's available inside this bike pump is what is the volume of the gas that is available. So if I pull it out like this, then there's a lot of room inside this pump, the whole cylinder really, is available for gases. Um, but when I push it in, that space decreases. And so that can help us to understand some of the properties that we're observing. So um, the other thing to remember about gases is that the particles move randomly and that they collide with each other and with the sides of the container. In fact, that those collisions with the sides of the container, as we've talked about, are what actually cause pressure in a gas. So. Um, the procedure, I think, was pretty self-explanatory. I did bring it up in a Zoom meeting, which not that many of you attended. We'd love to see you. Um, and basically, you're going to you, you take a bottle, you tie a string around it, you put it in the freezer for 12 to 20 hours. My recommendation is to just leave it there overnight and take it out the next morning. That's what I did. And then uh, you take the bottle out of the freezer. Now, I don't, I don't think I'm really spoiling anything here, but um, the... The result should be that immediately after you take it out of the freezer, the bottle is sort of scrunched up. It's sort of smushed. Um, we could do this sort of on an extreme level by taking something, taking a small amount of... Actually, you know what? I might actually film a video that will show you that demonstration uh, later, on, later on in the week. So let me see what I can do about that, actually. Um, and then... So you were, your, your primary job was to take pictures. Uh, you take pictures at the beginning to show how the bottle looks in the beginning. Make sure it's, you know, sort of fully inflated, blow some air into it to make sure there's no, you know, sort of crushed spots. And then you take pictures immediately after you take it out of the freezer. And then for every five minutes afterwards for half an hour. Um, there's not that much that's going to change after about 15 minutes or so, but I w we want you to, you know, be really sort of conscientious about taking your data. So um, now when you get all of your data, when you get all of your photos taken, this is where you're going to put them. Um, I want captions for those. So basically you're going to say before experiment and you're going to show me a picture and describe what I'm looking at. Um, and then, so when you get into the post lab questions, that's where I'm really going to understand that you know what you're talking about. So I want you to describe how the gases in the bottle are acting in the before picture. So highlight the differences you observe. Uh, one of the differences that you'll observe is the volume, um, because it will be smaller. Um, but also think in terms of how pressure might change. Um, think in terms of 
how the other properties may change as a result of changing the temperature. Um, and then um, you're going to have to identify the independent variable, the one that you controlled. And by putting in the, in the freezer, you probably can figure out what that is. And then how the dependent variable, sort of the most visible change that you observed, changed as a result. That should help you make some connections between the gas laws that we studied last week. Then, um, down here, I want you to imagine that you're a single gas particle. So remember, you're moving fast, you're moving randomly, you're super far apart from everything else because you're not very dense, and you're going to be able to change sort of your shape to fill the container. Um, and so I want you to talk about what happens at room temperature and then what changes when you get put in the freezer. Um, do you move faster or slower? Uh, do you move in a smaller area or a larger area? Talk about those things and give me some evidence from your experiment. Or if you can mention some of the gas laws that we studied last week in the gas laws intro, even better. Um, the goal of all of this is to help make connections between those gas laws and real world applications. And then, um, this asks, how can the understanding you derived from your photo timeline be applied to a real world situation? So I want you to think about situations in the real world where this might happen. Um, you might uh, maybe talk to your parents or, you know, look up some information online about uh, recommendations for inflating tires um, at different times of the year in the summer as opposed to the winter. Uh, that might be an application of what you're seeing here. Um, and when it's most likely that flat tires will occur. Um, there's actually a time of year where it's more likely that your tire will puncture because there's too much pressure in the tire, even though you don't change a thing about it. So uh, you want to be really careful when you're inflating your tires to keep all those things in mind. So um, in terms of the due date, due dates are kind of always flexible here. Um, we did put that it was due last Friday. Um, get it in sometime this week. I want you to want this to be one of the first things you do this week. So um, hopefully this will help you out. If you're not, if you want to figure out what I'm looking for, this is going to be our group. So we're going to give you four points for each of these four sections, and then a grade of zero out of four to, you know, sort of bring it all together. To, sort of evaluate the final product. Um, some of this is going to be subjective. I've been grading stuff pretty easy. As long as you're putting in the effort, as long as you're trying to give me good explanations for what you're seeing, that's the important thing. Um, even if it's not entirely right, good effort and good scientific explanations are going to get you pretty far here. So uh, I hope that helps, and I will talk to you later on. Thanks.